American Red Cross. I invite you to please rise and remove headdress for the attention of the colors led by the Jersey City Police Honor Guard and the Jersey City Fire Honor Guard. Honor Guard, by the half step, forward, pull. Oh. Lail, 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 right, lail, lail. join with me and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. September 11th is a day that we will never forget. As we commemorate the 16th anniversary of the attacks on 9-11, we hold in our hearts the memories of all those we lost and those who heroically rose up in the aftermath to respond to the need. I ask you to join with me now for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please retire the colors. the colors. On a guard, right in place. On a guard, on a half step, forward, oh, lail, 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 lail. Jersey City Police and Fire 9-11 Memorial Blood Drive, sponsored by Suburban Propane. We have many of the Suburban Propane 
um, staff members among us, so thank you so much for volunteering and, and giving back to the community. This partnership means so much to us. I want to thank the Hyatt Regency for hosting us and for all those blood donors who have come out to give blood. Your gift of life will help to save lives. In fact, as a national blood banking organization, some of the blood that's donated today may be sent into the affected areas. When Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Texas, we had pre-positioned volunteers, supplies, and blood products. I just returned this weekend from Texas. I was in the convention center for two weeks, and I saw the suffering firsthand that's going on. I held a two-month-old baby in my arms. She and her family had swam out of their home. They were rescued by first responders by boat, and they came wet, terrified, and only with the clothes on their backs. And I am so proud to say that just as we stood and responded together as a community in the aftermath of 9-11, we are all standing to respond to Texas, Florida, and beyond. So I thank you for all of that. I am proud now to introduce Mike Chaplow, who is Vice President of the American Red Cross Biomedical Services. Mike? Thank you, Donna. So like uh, many of you, uh, our lives were all touched uh, when this horrific event happened. And I lived in Houston for three and a half years, and actually during the uh, flood that just happened, had uh, a friend text me and say that their house was flooding up over the first level, what should we do? And I told him, I said, uh, take an ax if you have to go into the attic to make sure that you can bust out if you need to. That's the like human raw emotion of what's going on uh, out there, not only in Houston, but now in uh, Florida. And uh, Donna and other uh, first responders are going through the emotion with the people who have been affected. You know, when we get hit with a uh, hurricane, or multiple hurricanes as we just did, uh, no one really thinks about the long lasting uh, impact uh, on blood collections. So not only are the blood collections impacted that were scheduled that should have happened in those areas, they sometimes can't get rescheduled for months as those locations that were supposed to house them, like this, get rebuilt. So the impact from hurricanes actually amounts to thousands of units of blood that are lost from an event like that. And so we thank uh, Suburban Propane, uh, their employees who volunteer and give their time, uh, the food, the goods that uh, are presented to every single presenting donor, because I'll tell you, it makes a huge difference. People show up. People show up to give. And if you take a look at the resilience, you know, that's what America's about. And so they stand up, they stand proud, and they work side by side with us. And I can't thank them enough. Red Cross uh, welcomed over 132,000 people from this recent hurricane. More than 510 shelters that we uh, basically have uh, been manning across uh, six states. And we thank all the support that we get from our donors, from Suburban Propane, and your employees because it makes a huge difference. Let me also uh, recognize a number of people that we have uh, here with us. Uh, Stephen McGill, uh, Chief of the Jersey City Fire Department. Sergeant uh, W. Greg Kearse, Director of Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security for Jersey City. James Shea, Director, Department of Safety. Richard Gorman, Battalion Chief for the Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security. And many other current and, required and retired Jersey City officials, first responders, and emergency management personnel. Mike Stavala, President and CEO of Suburban Propane, Blood Drive Coordinators, Janet Chevris, JP Morgan Chase, John Nicoretta, Catholic War Veterans Post 1612 in Bayonne, and the Hyatt Regency Hotel for supporting our third annual Jersey City Police and Fire 9-11 Memorial Blood Drive. John Purcell and Debbie Kaplan, we thank you so much for enabling us to offer this again for the third year in a row. And uh, as we take a look at the uh, location, it can't be more fitting to this memorial. You know, we run about 500 blood drives across the U.S. every day. 
and it just makes us remember, and we'll never forget, that was our, our pledge when uh, we endured this uh, terrible and uh, atrocious event, that we would never forget the victims of 9-11. And the other thing I wanted to uh, just uh, make sure that uh, we all were aware, um, the Red Cross uh, provides blood nationally. So while the units of blood that are collected here are predominantly distributed to the local hospitals for patients in need in this area, during catastrophic events, hospitals come to the Red Cross because we supply over 40% of the blood products to hospitals for patient care in the U.S. So we are able to mobilize people, equipment, and blood ahead of a catastrophic event to make sure that it's there for the time of need. And as you all know, blood is not something that can be manufactured. There's no synthetic replacement to it. It's got to come from everyone like us. And so we thank you all for uh, your donations. Um, and we uh, work hard to make sure that we've got blood product on hand because when an emergency strikes, it's got to be there. We can't wait a week or two weeks to try to get it. So again, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And uh, we're staying true to our promise to uh, never forget. Thank you. We have a special group of people from Suburban Propane today. And before I introduce their president, I just want to give a couple of uh, remarks. First and foremost, when we wanted to have this drive so that we could commemorate all those who were lost and those who heroically stepped up, Suburban Propane once again said we'd like to support it. You can see there are employees among us who are coming to personally volunteer, and Mike Stavala leads by example. He empowers his team to be in the community and do good things to help our neighbors. I saw a gentleman from Suburban Propane, I hope I'm not putting you in the spot, who said years ago his house flooded and the Red Cross came day after day with hot meals for his family. And so he was honored to be here, so thank you. And I just want to say in Texas, I was able to go to a, a uh, Suburban Propane location. And let me just describe for you, they had had severe flooding. That you could see two, three feet of flooding in the offices. I met with their team, and despite the fact that their um, office was flooded, they were going into the neighborhoods. They were going house to house to help people get their propane back up and running. They sent in a crisis team, but that wasn't the end of their generosity. Mike Stavala personally approved a very generous financial donation. He also was on standby with your team to give us propane if we needed to get our feeding kitchens up and running. And so it's with great pleasure that I introduce a partner that leads by example. Mike Stavala. Thank you all. And uh, Donna, thank you very much. You know, let me start by um, first off acknowledging the tremendous work that you and all the people at the American Red Cross are doing uh, right now to support the relief efforts in Texas for Hurricane Harvey and obviously the preparation and the call to action to support the efforts down in Florida and other states that are going to be impacted by Hurricane Irma. Um, on behalf of Suburban Propane, I thank you. Thank you for your tireless efforts uh, in these times of need. And we're proud to be a partner and national sponsor with such a great organization as the American Red Cross. Thank you. We're also very honored to be here today sponsoring and supporting the third annual Jersey City Fire and Police 9-11 Memorial Blood Drive in memory of those first responders who responded to the call to help. This day will always be a day of remembrance as we hold dear the memory of those lost 16 years ago. It is also a day in which we can reflect on the resilience and compassion of the American people. Something we saw in the days, weeks, months, and years after the attack, and something we see playing out today during natural disasters where so many people are dealing with uh, such trouble right now. To the Jersey City police officers among us here, of which my brother-in-law, by the way, is one of these. So, uh, <laughs> And to the firefighters, on behalf of Suburban Propane, I thank you for your service. 
and the sacrifices made every day to keep our community safe. Our gratitude for your dedication and selfless devotion to safety and security of our communities cannot be measured. At Sperm Propane, a cornerstone of our mission statement is to serve not only our customers and our employees, but also the local communities in the 41 states in which we operate. We support the American Red Cross because their activities are so vital to the people in need around the country. And our partnership provides a conduit to help our employees volunteer their time to support the communities they live and serve. We are very privileged to be a dedicated sponsor of the American Red Cross and happy to do our part in helping save lives every day. As president and CEO of Suburban Propane, I'm really proud of my team. And we have a sea of red here and here. Um, the amount of time and effort that we, we spend volunteering in our local communities is unbelievable. During our 2016 100 Days of Summer campaign with the Red Cross, we helped collect over 1.4 million units of blood. Now this event is the culmination of our 2017 campaign, and we expect to blow the doors off that, okay? So to the many blood donors who have come through here today, I thank you for giving the, the gift of life to those in need. And finally, on behalf of the more than 3,500 employees of which we have a few dozen here today uh, of Suburban Propane Nationwide, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here today and continuing to help serve the communities in which we live. So thank you. I want you to know this morning I received a phone call from a 9-11 widow and she's commemorating this um, anniversary. She's a mother of three. She stood up after the Boston Marathon bombing, after the Pulse nightclub shooting, and now she's raising money for the Red Cross as she's doing the commemorative events for her family when they lost her husband. And that's what this is all about. This is people standing up and having a glimmer of hope and courage and strength. And right now, it's, I am proud to introduce Stephen McGill, Chief of the Department, who's going to say a few words on behalf of the city. And thank you so kindly, Chief. Uh, good morning. Kind of got looped, in, looped into this in the last minute. The, the mayor apologizes for not making it. He had some previous engagements you know, at politics or so. But uh, I just want to thank Red Cross for uh, allowing this to happen on such a nice day and in recognition of all the uh, public safety people that are out there in Jersey City and, and throughout the country and across the globe, actually. Uh, firefighters and police officers go through the same type of things everywhere in the world. Uh, we recognize that all the time. And uh, a day like today is sometimes overwhelming, but it's good to remember. Uh, we lost one of our brothers within the past two years, Captain Mark Lee, who was over and uh, working in the hole. And uh, he just got another recognition from the federal government, from the Department of Justice. About two weeks ago, I got a letter that uh, they're recognizing his death, death as a line of duty death due to 9-11 illness and they got a substantial sum for the family, which is never enough, obviously, but it's something. And just to have that recognition is, is great. But I'd just like to thank Red Cross and uh, all their partners for being here, Superb and Propane. I thought they were all Red Cross people coming in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was done on purpose. <laughs> but uh, you know, every day when we have fires or any type of tragedies throughout the city, uh, one of the first people we call is the Red Cross. And when they arrive, they usually help out the citizens that are there. And this is on a, you know, unfortunately a weekly basis that they come in and help out uh, getting shelters or, or places of refuge for our uh, citizens in the city. But uh, I just like, oh, and I want to recognize uh, Deputy Chief Joe Connors. They missed you. He's representing the police department. We always uh, tease each other about good guys, bad guys. Obviously, uh, <laughs> fire the good guys, by the way. <laughs> But I just want to recognize, yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll cook you something later. Uh, 
but just thank you very much. It's a, it's a great day. It's a great thing you're doing for us. And hopefully we had enough of our members come uh, to support, to give blood out to all the other citizens out there throughout the city. And on behalf of the mayor and the council, thank you very much. Have a great day. Last week, after a very long day at the Houston Convention Center, I got a cup of coffee, and I sat down, and there was a gentleman there with a red class vest, and we were exhausted. We were just taking a moment. And I started talking to him, and I said I was coming to this commemorative event, and it turns out he was a 28-year veteran of the EMS department that responded to 9-11. He's now retired, and in his retirement, he's volunteering for the Red Cross and what he said to me is, they were there for us, I want to be there for them. And so, uh, even down in Texas, we had our first responders from New York who are making a difference. I would like to introduce our executive director, Jocelyn Gilman, so you could say a few words. So thank you, Donna. And thank you everybody for coming here today. Um, yes, it, it is our first responders, like those here in, in Jersey City, that the Red Cross is really proud to work with as we respond to help families displaced by home fires. We're also honored to work alongside them to help prevent home fires through our partnership as a result of our home fire campaign. The Red Cross, together with the Jersey City firefighters and the Community Emergency Response Team, have been going door to door, installing free smoke alarms and educating families about family, uh, fire safety in Jersey City communities through this campaign. Since the launch of the campaign nearly three years ago, the Red Cross and our partners throughout New Jersey have installed more than 21,000 21, free smoke alarms uh, in homes in high risk na uh, neighborhoods We've also educated thousands of families about fire safety. And we've helped them create a fire escape plan. September is National Preparedness Month, and the Red Cross encourages you and our families to make a plan to make sure that your household is ready for the next emergency or disaster. We've, um, we encourage everyone to do three things. We encourage you, please, to make a plan, to build a kit, and to keep informed. I would also ask you today, maybe you'll take out your phones afterwards and download the emergency app, because that will also help you what to do before, during, and after disasters where shelters are. So if nothing else, please download that app as well. And this message obviously couldn't come across any stronger as we see the devastation caused by Hurricane Harvey, and watch anxiously as Hurricane Irma continues to bear down on Florida and other states this morning. The Red Cross is there, uh, working side by side with our partners to provide safe refuge and support for Floridians forced from their homes by the largest evacuation in state history. The Red Cross has mobilized its second massive hurricane response in two weeks to help people affected by Hurricane Irma. Relief efforts extend from the U.S. Virgin Islands to Florida and the Mid-Atlantic region. We continue to work around the, uh, the uh, clock to provide shelter, food, comfort, and other emergency support to those affected by Hurricane Harvey as well. As of today, the American Red Cross New Jersey region has deployed 88 disaster workers and three emergency response vehicles and they will help the relief efforts, both as a result of Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. And additional volunteers are ready to deploy. The Red Cross provides compassionate care when people need it most. Our network of generous donors, dedicated volunteers, and employees share a mission of preventing and alleviating suffering here in New Jersey and across the country through five key services, which include disaster relief, supporting our military families, health and safety services, international services, and of course, our blood services program. So I want to take this opportunity today to thank each of you for your support, 
for together with the Mayor, Jersey City, OEM, the Department of Public Safety, our police, and our fire, um, we all want to say thank you, and thank you truly for touching, changing, and saving lives with us. Our partnership is so important. give you a picture, after Sandy, um, I was honored to serve here in the community, we sent out six million emergency alerts through our apps. After these two category four hurricanes, we sent out 46 million. That's to help people know that there are alerts that they're in danger and to seek shelter, alerts to find shelter or evacuation centers. It's really amazing and I echo you, I encourage you to, to download it. Now we have a, a wonderful, wonderful mom who's here, who is going to share why we're doing what we're doing here by giving blood. For my Lou, you, I am so proud to have you here, and I invite you to come on up and share your personal story. For having me today. This is a very emotional day and I'm going to try to just get through this. Um, I'm honored to share my story today. My name is Fumi Lyo Brown. I'm the proud mother of an eight-year-old and a three-year-old daughter. Um, last year at this time, I could have never imagined that I'd be standing here talking to you today. I didn't know much about the Red Cross, its mission here in New Jersey especially, and how easily one of us might be in desperate need of its services today. 16 years ago today, none of us could have envisioned how desperately the Red Cross would be needed by so many. Well, on July 11, 2016, my family's life took a turn that we could have never imagined. I took my then two-year-old daughter, Chloe, to the doctor due to belabored breathing. I was sure at the time that she had an allergy or perhaps even asthma, but within 24 hours, we had been from the pediatrician to the emergency room to a sit-down conversation with a team of oncologists. It was then that my husband and I learned of Chloe's diagnosis of stage three neuroblastoma, a rare pediatric cancer. So no, a year ago today, I would not have imagined that I'd be telling you this story of how life can push you right past the edge of your comfort zone and into a realm of discomfort you didn't know was possible, nor did any one of us know 16 years ago. Well, that meeting with the oncologist at Hackensack Medical Center led to the first of Chloe's many surgical procedures. However, this first procedure was the one that she didn't bounce back from easily. Her first saving grace was the blood transfusion she received in the pediatric ICU the night right after her surgery. As they began um, chemotherapy in the coming days, the bags of blood just came along with it. Chloe was intubated and sedated for two weeks. She remained in the PICU for over a month before she was able to breathe on her own again. And after three months of hospitalization, three rounds of chemotherapy, and many, many blood transfusions, my two-year-old, Chloe, finally made it home. My husband and I knew we had a long road ahead of us, filled with more discomfort and many, many unknowns. One night, my neighbor Camille asked me, what can I do for you? The only reply I had was, there are so many people who have given blood to Chloe in order to save her life. I just want to pay it forward now. If I could pull up one of those big blood donation trucks right in front of my house, I would ask people from far and wide to come and donate blood. Well, the saying goes, watch what you ask for, because it just might come true. My incredible neighbor, Camille Duane Vallejo, and I have to say her name because I was in a state of complete overwhelm where I could have never organized the blood drive that she did. She organized a community blood drive in Chloe's honor where we had more people than the space could accommodate. So we had to turn many donors away. Not a common thing for blood drives. In total, Chloe's blood drive was a huge success. Blood donors give 61 productive pints of blood that were able to help 183 people. 
the transporter said it was the most blood he'd carried in one single trip. We've now decided to make this blood drive an annual event in Chloe's honor. Last September, Chloe was fortunate to have a successful surgery to remove the large tumor that was threatening her life. She recovered valiantly, and today I'm thrilled to announce that Chloe's in remission. The thing about life is we don't know where it's taking us or what lies in the road ahead of us. But I've learned from giving beyond my comfort zone that that's what can actually lead to another person's ability to experience comfort. It is not comfortable or convenient to give blood. But what that selfless act can do for another person goes beyond anyone's comprehension. So thank you for allowing me to share my story today and for your support of the American Red Cross. I just want to say that September is Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month. And so for any blood that's being donated today, just know that there's probably a child in need whose life you're saving. Thank you. Thank you so much. That just touches our heart, and we appreciate you sharing your personal story. That's just amazing. And Jersey City resident, hero, mom of the year, thank you so much. <laughs> I just wanted to take a moment to recognize some additional colleagues. It takes so many to put something like this together between the different departments in the city and also with my colleagues. So I want to recognize Guy Triano, who's right in the back there. Guy's the director of recruitment for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. I also want to commend Emily Ho and Julia Lee. Where are you? There we go, right over there. Those two are like amazing. They're our go-to. I call them liquid gold because they get everything done. And I want to just um, also recognize Nandini for all your work and help on behalf of suburban propane. Um, at this time, we'd like to request all of our speakers and special guests to come out um, so that we can um, go out and have kind of a moment of silence. And I just want to thank the Jersey City folks because being here is something that touches my heart. And so thank you for allowing us to spend this day with you. Speaking program is concluded.